far behind you. City County Planning Commission, please come to order. Ms. Martin, would you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Rich? Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Coppinger? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham? Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Gay? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Madison? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Houston? Yes, ma'am. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. You've all had the summary minutes of the January 17th meeting in your packet. Uh, are there any corrections to those minutes? No corrections. I'd ask for a motion. Moved. Thank you. Okay. And a second. Thank you. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Coppinger? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Gay? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Houston? Yes, ma'am. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Runner, I request that you order that the Warren County Zoning Ordinance, Subdivision Regulations, and the Comprehensive Plan with all of its elements effective February 7, 2019, be introduced as exhibits for tonight's hearings. I'd further request that you order that the staff reports all attachments together with the commission's file for each application be introduced as exhibits. And finally, I'd ask that Ben Peterson, executive director, Rachel Hurt, planner, Monica Ramsey, planner, be sworn as witnesses before you and that their oath and qualifications be reflected in the record for each hearing. Order. The truth before this commission. Thank you all. The preliminary subdivision and site development plans. Any questions on those commissioners? No questions. Next, we have the letters of credit and performance bonds. And if you'll notice at your seat, you have an amended agenda that's adding a third item. Any questions on those three items? No questions, then I'd ask for a motion. Move. Thank you, I need a second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Vitale. Commissioner Balance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Coppinger? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Gay? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Houston? Yes, ma'am. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. We do not have any unfinished business. That will move us right into the public hearing for tonight. Docket number 2019-02, Flume. Keystone Development Group, LLC, has filed an application for a future land use map amendment containing approximately 39.1132 acres located on tracts of land at zero Veterans Memorial Lane, 2337 Russellville Road with frontage on Hickory Street and Walnut Street located between Veterans Memorial Lane, Russellville Road, Stonehenge Avenue and Robin Avenue from high density residential, commercial and mixed use residential to commercial and high density residential and also on docket number 2019-04-ZBG, uh, those same applicants have filed to rezone that same track of land of the 39.1132 acres from agriculture RM3, which is multifamily residential, highway business and floodplain to RM4, again, multifamily residential, highway business and floodplain with a general development plan. And we will have the staff report from Ms. Hurt. Thank you, Chair Runner. We had a pre-application conference on August the 29th for the property you just described, located on Veterans Memorial Lane. You can see that the current zoning of the property, as you mentioned, is a mix of agriculture, multifamily, highway business. There's a portion that's also located in the floodplain. And as you mentioned, there are two applications this evening. The first application is to, con uh, to consider amending the future land use map. I know there are a lot of different classifications you mentioned, but um, basically, just a brief summary, the smaller outline here up front, uh, the applicants are proposing to amend this area from mixed-use residential to commercial, and then the remaining portion of the development that's the larger outlined area kind of in this general location, they're all, uh, they are proposing to amend all of that to where it's all high density, which is this red color here. And I'll get to a little bit more about each classification here in just a second. You can see that the current use of the property is agricultural and vacant, and that they're surrounding, uh, the properties surrounding the area are a mixture of single family, multifamily. There are also some commercial uses that are scattered along Russellville Road and some pockets of industrial uses as well. With that, I'll go through the future land use map categories on page two. 
starting off with the high density residential land use designation, which consists of areas occupied by multifamily housing, including higher density duplexes, townhomes, apartment buildings, and condominiums. Densities exceeding eight dwelling units per acre are encouraged in this future land use category. High density single family may also be acceptable at five and a half dwelling units per acre. The mixed use residential category applies to areas where taken as a whole the primary land use is residential and a variety of housing types and densities balanced by complementary retail, office, institutional, and civic uses. The, the distribution of land among these various activities shall be implemented through specific zoning with standards addressing the form and character of development to ensure compatibility. <coughs> this designation applies to the historic core of downtown Bowling Green or urbanized areas being redeveloped with the primary use as residential where complementary commercial and services are provided in a contiguous area. Here development standards should be tailored to emphasize an urban character and a mix of intensity of development appropriate to this unique center of activity. When proposed as part of a mixed use development, commercial uses should comprise only 25% of such development. Standalone commercial developments should not exceed 10% of any contiguous area designated as mixed use residential. No commercial footprint should exceed 10,000 square feet. Compatibility should be assessed by applying policies in LU113 in conjunction with a general development plan. And then last, we have the commercial future land use designation, which consists of a broad array of commercial development, including individual commercial businesses that may exist along a highway corridor or a business district, as well as larger planned shopping centers and office parks. Limited high density multifamily uses are allowed to be mixed into commercial areas. These uses should be limited to upper stories or blended in or scattered among commercial uses. No more than 25% of any contiguous area designated as commercial should contain multifamily uses. Compatibility should be assessed by applying the policies in LU113 in conjunction with the general development plan. So at the bottom of page two, we've included LU114, which is um, one of the action items from the comprehensive plan. It outlines the procedures to amend the future land use map and it states that the Planning Commission's approval of a future land use map amendment should be based on at least one of three criteria. Those are listed at the bottom of page two. Um, generally, applicants when amending the future land use map focus on the third bullet point, which states that the proposed use is clearly compatible with the existing surrounding development to be demonstrated by the applicant. The compatibility review should include an assessment of the proposed use which includes but is not limited to the location and bulk of buildings and other structures, building height, building materials, intensity of use, density of development, location of parking and signage within the surrounding area, and in addition the applicant must prove that the proposed amendment will not result in development that exceeds the capacity of the existing infrastructure including roads, water, sewer, and stormwater. And to address the, uh, the criteria that I just went over from the comprehensive plan, the applicant submitted a brief narrative. That's listed at the top of page three of your staff report. And their narrative reads as follows. This property is located along Veterans Memorial Lane near the Russellville Road and Veterans Memorial Lane intersection. Along Veterans Memorial is a variety of commercial uses with multifamily uses backing up to these uses. From Russellville Road to Morgantown Road, commercial uses range from strip centers, convenience stores, to big box retail. The commercial uses complement and provide services for these residential units in the area. And with that, I'll actually jump on to the preliminary development plan that was submitted with this application. And I'm going to uh, go on to the site characteristics review section of the report and touch on a few things here. So first, for layout, layout, lot sizes, and setbacks, um, you can see that this is the general uh, plan for the development. It would be served by internal streets. They are proposing uh, a larger apartment complex uh, to be located that, uh, where the yellow building footprints are. And then the black building footprints, uh, those are to be developed on individual multifamily lots. And as far as setbacks go, we have uh, we have mentioned that the setbacks would adhere to both the RM4 and HB development standards in the zoning ordinance, so there are also uh, several commercial lots proposed along Veterans Memorial Lane, so um, those are kind of in this general area down here. So those would follow the highway business development standards. And we uh, 
Also worth noting, uh, the multifamily development adjacent to you, the single family neighborhood, the Spring, Spring Hill subdivision back here, there are increased setbacks that are required by the zoning ordinance uh, for multifamily development when adjacent to single family use. Moving along to natural features, we've noted that Jennings Creek runs along the northwest portion of the development. Uh, you can actually kind of see that here. So Jennings Creek runs through that portion of the property. We've also noted that portions of the property contain mature trees and sinkholes, and the applicants did agree to preserve a portion of the existing trees around the perimeter of the development, and they did also address sinkhole repair and protection in their development plan conditions, which I will get to in just a second. Under floodplains and wetlands, we've noted that a portion of the development is located in the floodplain and that there's also a wetland located within the area of the proposed development. The applicants did not address the wetland in their development plan conditions. And then moving down to site design and compatibility, let me jump to the density map here. So for the surrounding density, you can see that there's a varying range of densities on this map ranging from 2.31 to 25.86 dwelling units per acre. We've noted that the majority of the surrounding area is comprised of moderate density single family residential uses with some higher density multifamily residential uses also present in the area. Moving on to page four, there's a few more things I'm gonna touch on from this section. So next we have the surrounding architectural features. The surrounding area contains a mixture of one and two story residential, commercial, and industrial structures of varying ages. Many of the properties in the nearby area incorporate signage that is much shorter and smaller in square footage than the 30 foot height and 150 foot square foot maximums permitted by the zoning ordinance in the proposed highway business zone. The church that is adjacent to the development also incorporates a monument style sign constructed of brick. The applicants have not limited signage within the proposed development and are planning to adhere to the minimum requirements of the zoning ordinance for the highway business zone. Under building materials, we've noted that the majority of the homes in the adjacent Spring Hill subdivision are comprised of brick. Other structures in the area closer to the intersection of Russellville Road and Veterans Memorial Lane are a mixture of brick, stone, vinyl, and metal. The applicants have committed in their development plan conditions that the exterior facades of principal structures for both the multifamily and commercial portions of the development would be constructed of at least 75% glass, stone, brick, ephus, or similar material, or other cementitious or modern masonry material. Under building orientation, we've noted that buildings along Veterans Memorial Lane should be designed with a front facade oriented toward Veterans Memorial Lane, or at least appear to face Veterans Memorial Lane and then buildings along internal streets within the development should face internal streets. The applicants did address building orientation in their development plan conditions for the highway business portion of the development and committed that structures located on lots having frontage on Veterans Memorial Lane would be designed with a front facade oriented toward Veterans Memorial Lane. Under proposed open space, we've noted the minimum requirements in both the highway business zone and RM4 zones. And we've also noted that the applicants have committed to construct a clubhouse pool and other amenities to serve the large apartment complex. You can see there's a pool and clubhouse kind of shown in this general area there. And then under connectivity, we've noted that the development is proposed to connect with the adjoining Spring Hill subdivision at both Hickory Street and through a cul-de-sac at the end of Walnut Street. So there's a cul-de-sac proposed here at the end of Walnut and then Hickory Street is here and they're proposing a connection there as well. Moving along, uh, under the traffic impact study section of the report, we've noted section 314 of the zoning ordinance which outlines the requirements as to when a traffic impact study is needed. Um, and it also goes on to say that the traffic impact study requirement can be waived if the public works and transportation agencies can anticipate the impacts of the proposed development and any necessary improvements that may need to be made. So um, they have worked with the applicants and have waived the traffic study requirement in lieu of certain improvements that they're anticipating that the applicants will coordinate and have approved through their agencies. They did actually, the applicants, um, even though the traffic impact study was waived, they did also submit a signal warrant study which was completed in January and it was completed by Cannon and Cannon 
And we did include excerpts from the section of the evaluations and conclusions portion of the signal warrant study. And this stated that a traffic signal warrant analysis based on the manual uh, on uniform traffic control devices, MUTCD, was conducted at the proposed intersection of Veterans Memorial Lane with the main development access. So they're talking about this entrance into the development here. The analysis indicated that MUTCD warrants are all projected to be satisfied under full build-out conditions of the proposed development. Furthermore, additional traffic from the existing subdivision would likely utilize the new Hickory Street connection to Veterans Memorial Lane, which would increase the projected volumes at this intersection. Moving on, uh, I'll move into the development plan conditions that were submitted by the applicants. There are two sets. One is for the highway business portion of the request, and then the other one is for the RM4 portion of the request. So number one, for this is we're going to get started with the highway business development plan conditions. So number one, all service utility lines will be located underground. Number two, the property may be developed with a maximum of 250,000 square feet of commercial and or office space. Number three references that building material requirement that I went over just a second ago. Um, I'll also note that they have prohibited plain face block as a visible finished material. Number four, the property will be developed with uniform lighting for travelways and parking areas and lighting will be designed as down lighting, shoebox style or wall pack lighting. Number five, again, any traffic improvements would be coordinated and approved by the appropriate public works department or transportation cabinet. Number six, the following uses shall be prohibited, adult entertainment, any sale, rental or display of pornographic material, bar or lounge except in connection with a restaurant, commercial parking, self-service storage, used car sales and vehicle repair, unless in connection with a new car dealership. Number seven uh, mentions that they are planning to adhere to the highway business standards and the zoning ordinance for signage. Number eight, new structures constructed on the property will not exceed four stories in height. Number nine uh, addresses the building orientation that I just referenced, to, referenced on the previous page. And then number 10, all common open space and drainage basins shall be maintained by the developer until 50% of the project has been completed, at which time the developer has the option to transfer maintenance responsibilities to the owner's association. Next, I'll go over the RM4 portion of the development and those proposed development plan conditions. Number one, all service utility lines will be located underground. Number two, the property may be developed into a maximum of 662 dwelling units. Number three, again, addresses building materials and prohibits plain face block. Number four, the property will be developed with uniform lighting for travelways and parking areas, and lighting will be designed as down lighting, shoebox style, or wall pack lighting. Number five, again, deals with those transportation improvements. Number six, outside trash collection areas shall be screened on all sides with a visual barrier. Number seven, new structures constructed on the property will not exceed four stories in height. Number eight, the large apartment complex will include a clubhouse pool and other amenities. Number nine, sinkholes detected on the property prior to or during construction will be repaired or protected with a sinkhole structure using methods approved by the Bowling Green Public Works Stormwater Management Department, depending on whether such sinkholes are located in a proposed drainage area. Number 10, all existing trees located on property line, the property line adjacent to Spring Hill subdivision, which have a caliper of 12 inches or greater and which are located within 10 feet of the property line will be maintained during development and construction on the property. And then number 11, all common open space and drainage basins shall be maintained by the developer until 50% of the project has been completed, at which time the developer has the option to transfer maintenance responsibilities to the owner's association. All right, moving on. So on page seven, we have our Focus 2030 category review. Staff evaluated 20 items, and we determined that there were several items that were in compliance, but that there were also 14 items that we felt the Planning Commission should assess for compliance and make that determination here this evening. So I'm gonna to touch on those items. So first we have LU111 and LU112 and LU113, which deal with the future land use map and compatibility. The Planning Commission should determine if the proposal is compatible with the area and if it complies with these items. 
Next, we have LU2 and LU2.1, which deal with quality of development and character preservation. The Planning Commission should determine if the proposal is a high quality development that includes design standards tailored to preserve the character of the area. Next, LU211 deals with open space, which encourages increased open space standards to ensure that an adequate amount of such space is usable. Again, I had mentioned the applicants are proposing to incorporate a clubhouse pool and other amenities for the large apartment complex, but there is no additional open space uh, depicted on the preliminary development plan for the portion of the development containing the individual multifamily lots. Next, LU 2.5 and 252. Those deal with compatibility and protection of established neighborhoods. And the Planning Commission should determine if the proposed development is compatible with the surrounding area and if the proposed layout of the development will protect nearby established neighborhoods. Next, NCR 1.1 and 1.3 deal with the natural environment and physical suitability of the proposed development. The applicants did address repair and protection of existing sinkholes but did not address the wetland that's located within the property. Next, HN1, HN1.2, and HN1.3. Those deal with infill development, and the Planning Commission should determine if the proposal is a compatible infill development that will maintain or improve existing character, development patterns, and urban design, and if it will strengthen the existing area. And last, ED1, which deals with economic development, and the Planning Commission should determine if the proposed development will result in an additional business that will help to diversify the local economy. And with that, I think I'm going to jump back to page one, and I'm going to finish up with our points to consider. Number one, the Planning Commission should determine, sorry, should consider if the proposed development is clearly compatible with the existing surrounding development as demonstrated by the applicants to warrant the future land use map change from mixed use residential to commercial and from mixed use residential and commercial to high density residential. If the future land use map amendment is approved, the highway business portion of the proposal would be consistent with the future land use map and the commercial category, and the RM4 portion of the request would also be consistent with the high density residential category if deemed compatible with the existing surrounding development. Next, the proposed development complies with the majority of the site characteristics review criteria. And then next, the proposed general development plan complies with the majority of the review criteria for site design and compatibility and meets most of the requirements in the zoning ordinance. I do have a few more things to mention, um, kind of in light of recent correspondence with the applicants earlier today. Um, the development plan conditions, as I stated earlier, limit the maximum building height to four stories but re recent communication with the applicants has indicated that the buildings shown on this proposal are only planned to be three stories in height. Next, um, we've also noted that the number of units shown on the concept plan exceeds the number of units permitted by the development plan conditions. And then also we've noted that if the individual multifamily lots contain three story buildings, there is not enough parking shown on the concept plan to meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance. And I believe that is all I have for the report. And I will also mention that I think you should have a letter from a property owner from the Spring Hill subdivision who was unable to attend the hearing this evening. So that is there just for your consideration as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner, have any questions, please? Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Chris. Go ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. So if I understand correctly, everything in black um, this whole track of land was an, is RM3, correct, right now? Yeah, let me jump back to the zoning map. So the majority of the property is currently zoned RM3. Okay. You can see there's a little strip of agriculture here, okay. and then this little portion out to Russellville Road is currently zoned highway business. Okay. So we're looking at trying to take the whole track to RM4 and, and the part of the commercial. Right. So this would be the proposal is for this smaller piece here to be rezoned to highway business and then everything else they're proposing to rezone to RM4. Oh, so can you go back to the, um, the, the, so my first question is going to be the units up front who are not part of the apartment complex. Will all those units be uniformed? And like we did on Three Springs Road, where they'll all have to be the same brick, same roof. Um, I mean, look identical is, is probably the first question I have. That would be a good question for the applicants. Okay. I, I'm not sure what their intentions are as far as design or 
And are those, as on the design right now, are those eight plexes or those 16 plexes, those 24 plexes? It's my understanding that the yellow building footprints, those are 24 plexes, okay. eight units per floor, three stories tall. Okay. And then the buildings with the black footprints, it's my understanding that those are 12 plexes, three stories, four units per floor. Okay. And then the other question I would have, do the black, the units in black there, do they have access to the clubhouse and the pool? That I'm not sure. The applicants okay. would have to answer that. Where is the highway business? That area? would be these um, these five lots here, kind of in this general area. Back up to those par parking lots. Yeah. So these parking lots in the rear would serve the commercial buildings that they have shown up front. They they did commit in the development plan conditions that the for the commercial buildings that they would be designed with a front facade oriented toward veterans. So right now, way is proposed. How short are you in parking? Uh, hold on, I can tell you. So if all of the buildings shown on this plan are three stories, you would be roughly 350 spaces short for the black footprints. How many? 350 spaces short. Mm-hmm. If these were two-story buildings, uh, there would only be about 25 spaces that were missing. Can you point with your pointer where the entrances and exits are on this? Sure. So this is the main entrance they're proposing to the development. Off, so this is veterans here. So that would be the main entrance. Okay. And then they're also pro proposing a connection back here with, I always get Hickory and Walnut confused, that is Hickory. So they're also proposing a connection here with Hickory, and then there's a cul-de-sac planned here off of Walnut, and then there's an adjacent development here that they're also proposing to tie into. Nothing off Russellville Road, correct? Well, they do have the property that goes all the way up to Russellville Road, but their plan, as shown, does not actually have an access point onto Russellville Road. So with the emergency, our trucks, ambulances, everything, their entrance would be off veterans. Yes, unless, and I'm not sure of the definitive plans for this property, but if this property had an access on Russellville Road, it's possible they could then still access the property from this connection here. Right now, everything looks like veterans. Right. So we're, if if proposed, as Christian said, we're 350 parking spaces short. Yes. And on the last page of the concept plan, there were some questions about uh, on the what was mailed to us. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be large enough to accommodate? the required basin size there's two questions there on with the yellow apartments mm -hmm. down here and up at the top for water retention was that addressed that would have to be addressed by the applicants because it looks like they they're in the in the basin with the buildings now I know that the portion, so the portion of the property in the floodplain here, before any building could be constructed in the floodplain, that would have to be amended. Up at the top also. Well, let me jump back to the corner, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, uh, so this is the only portion that's in the floodplain right now. And that's kind of, Rachel, just if so you can imagine, that's kind of this area right here. By, by the creek, where the creek runs through. Also up the top. Oh, is there? He's talking about the notes from the public works department that's in the, in the staff report, their yeah. last page. Very last page. The staff report. Oh. Oh. Oh, I think they just made a note if the basin is going to go there. But I, I'm not sure that you would have to ask the applicants what their plans are for drainage. So 
Council Rachel, let me just ask one other question on parking. How many units should it be for adequate parking? So if, if we're looking, so it's really the individual lots where the parking kind of gets to be an issue. From what I can tell, this portion of the development with the parking that, that they've provided would, would meet the requirements. But then when you get over here, these are, uh, if they're 12 unit buildings and they each have two bedrooms, you would need a total of, let's see. Well, I did the calculations for the whole thing. But there's 638 spaces that are provided for the whole development. And if these are all three-story, 12-unit buildings, they would need 996 spaces total. And so they would be roughly 350 spaces short. Um, so would they need to go down to two-story instead of three-story to make it, up the difference? If they were two-story buildings, they would still only be around, well, they'd be around 25 spaces short, but you could probably squeeze those in somewhere, I would think. That's 20 spaces is, is doable, yeah. So, well, right now, this section, as, as proposed at three stories with 20, 24 units per building, if you kind of were to, to divide it in half, this would meet the parking requirements for this section. It's basically everything, once you get on this side of the main roadway there, that's where the, the parking becomes an issue. And if those were lowered to two stories, then that would be much closer to meeting the requirements. Those we would have to determine as we know the use um, and then just to calculate the parking once the use is known. So obviously you guys as staff had communication with them about being this short on parking. I actually just found out today that those were three stories. I thought that they were two all along and so when we looked at it initially we knew that the parking was a little bit short but then it wasn't until today that we realized they were three stories. Fair enough. Any other questions before we hear from the applicant? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll hear from the applicant. If you'd state your name and address for us, please. Thad Lucas, uh, 555 Dunbarton Avenue, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And you swear to tell the truth before I do. this commission. Thank you, sir. I guess we'll jump right into the parking to kind of clear, clear that up. I had told Rachel that we, the individual lights had the option to go. We texted, so, or emailed. They have the option to go to three-story, but obviously each individual lot will have to make sure they have the adequate parking. So when we did this concept plan, it's based on an average two-bedroom unit on the 600, 662 total units. So how, how, how many units in the in the buildings in the black? Uh, well, it, 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 each individual unit, each individual lot owner will be able to make that determination based on you know if they um, want an eightplex or if they would want to do a twelveplex, then they would have to make sure that their lot that they purchased had enough acreage and size to cover that parking. So, so. so all the lots are not going to be the same size? That's correct. That's correct. Um, I mean, obviously, we've got a layout there that is um, it's based on what Rachel said. It's, it's looked at an average of an eightplex, two-bedroom units. So, so. so if that was the case, you could have Six plus six plex, eight plex, twelve plex. Four plex, a twelve plex. Right. And and to kind of I guess I may ans answer a few questions. Um, we've got the the idea is to have a couple of different building styles that um, buyers can choose from. So we we've actually got John Williams with Williams Architects to make sure that the entire development works together from the commercial side, the multifamily side with the apartments, and then even the individual lot owners will be tied to restrictions that, that coordinate brick styles, colors, so that it looks like a uniform development, not a bunch of individual eight plexes but they kind of be, run them up. But they could be different colors. There could be a variety of colors, but again, that would, that would work together. Um, you know, we don't want a, a pink house over here and a, a purple house over here. And a, Who determines that? Know, it would be determined by the uh, 
the developers as a group. So we'll have the, and basically an architectural review committee with John Williams being part of that to guide that, uh, I guess, that creative side of the development. Let me just go ahead and ask the question that's going to come up here in a second. Sure. Will y'all be willing to go to uniform buildings and uniform style, color, roofs, uh, windows, that everything matches? I would, I would say we would be able to, as long as we get some options in there. I mean, if we can say, okay, hey, there's three or four options of oh, that no, style. No, I think what we're asking, yeah. will y'all be willing to go to one style, one color, kind of like we did on Three Springs Road, some other things have come through, uh, Scottsville Road, some other, I mean, the last year, year and a half, I think we've tried to do a really good job of making sure everything looks uniformed, and uniform meaning the same. Well, I think if you if, if you do that, you do take away some of the creativity of being able to get, I, I think you can be uniform in a look, but still have the ability to have some different styles intermixed. Um, I guess in my mind, when I think uniform, I think square blocks as an engineer, I think of just, oh, we got a bunch of red buildings out there. Uh, when you say uniform, I think of Cave Mill Road apartments when you drive by and you look over to the right and you see that big, long red streak of red brick, not very attractive from Cave Mill Road. I'm look, talking about where the Dollar General store is. That's all uniform, but it's not really that attractive. But if you look at some developments where you have some different architectural features, I guess I just want to make sure that we're, if we say uniform, we're not losing the ability to have some architectural creativity, I guess. But architectural creativity is in the mind of... <laughs> right. I, yeah. Uh, I mean, not to, I mean, I, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself. Sure. Is, um, I can see that being a mess. Yeah, I, I you guess. you don't want to see 34 different buildings. No, 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 no. There would be, there would be a, there would be a, a set, like if you wanted to do a fourplex, here's a fourplex building you could have. If you want an eightplex, here's an eightplex building. So, you, so it so would be all designed. Four, all fourplexes would be the same color? I would say generally yes. I mean, no, again, it's, I, I, it's either not. yes or no. Yeah. So if, if I may, so, so that's some of the, just frankly, issues we've had as, as staff just trying to nail this, this one down. We, we, we don't know a lot here. So um, we've had conversations just as, as soon as three hours ago uh, with, with emails talking about the buildings or three story, the individual lots or three story, two bedroom units. Which we, we don't which don't meet the parking. We have a development plan conditions that, that say that the buildings can be four stories, um, which is even 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 taller and even more units. So, you, but we are. But you all have did, expressed they did, this. They so. did change that there would be no four story buildings, correct? We have not had that commitment yet, which I'm Hamp may be fixing to ask for. But is that a fair statement that nothing? Would uh, be there's fair? there's one. Um, there is an option with the, the land drops about, if you've gone out there and looked, it drops about 45 feet from front to back. So one of the questions we've asked and the architects looking into is the ability to, if we did an underground, had a, uh, a four-story building that had garage parking on one side to overcome an elevation drop, is that considered a fourth story or is that considered uh, an, an underground part? So there are some engineering issues on some grade changes that um, that's why we put the fourth story on there um, the the thought is that it's going to be three-story buildings on the it just doesn't make sense to go to a fourth story with the multifamily uh, you get into elevators things like that so but there is there was some ability for some um, storage or underground parking just because of the elevation drop on some of these that what do you calculate being a fourth story so um, and that those those would be closer to the I guess the Jennings Creek side where it really drops off in elevation. And it's hard to tell on a, on a flat two D drawing the the amount of drop that 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 uh, is on that that section there. So, I guess if you answer this questions, are you going to say that the the different buildings are going all going to be different, or are you going to have no, no, they'll have Similar the they'll have the same architectural style. So, I mean, if you say this is a Victorian or this is, it's going to be the same architectural style throughout. There may just be some minor 
changes here or there in the the, the look of the building, but I, I, you know. I had going, going back to this, if we're 300 parking places short, some buildings, and it's not contiguous among the the different owners who buy these buildings and want to build a building. Somebody could build a three-story building. Somebody's going to have to build a two-story building to comply with the parking, right? That's correct. That's correct. So, You're only going to be able to do what you can do on your lot. Right. Okay. So, so just in what we've seen in the past, it would make sense to say, okay, if we're going to do this, everything should comply with the, the height and the amount of parking. I guess I can, I, I agree with that. Um, so, so you would what be, we're not agreeing about is if, 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 if we, if we're, what we're looking at tonight is some buildings going to be taller, some are going to be shorter. If somebody goes in there and buys a building, wants to build a three story and the next guy is out of parking spaces, he's going to build a two story to fill all this in, correct? Well, right. For for an example, some of the lots are larger than than other lots just because of the shape. So a smaller lot, you may only be able to do an eight plex, and that's all to get your parking on there in your building. But if you have a larger track, and you want to do a twelve plex and arrange your parking to get that, and you do that third story, then we did not want to uh, prohibit that from them. I, I guess the kind of how this moved through. It was an RM three. Zoning, there's no binding elements. Uh, you go out there and build a bunch of eight plexes. We can build, you know, just doing the raw math, you can do 661 units on the current RM3 zoning. Uh, we're wanting to do the RM4 just to allow us to do the apartment complex and to give some more flexibility in the building styles. And, and we're requesting 662 units, which is basically just one more than we would be allowed to do in the RM3 section uh, we're trying to just give some ability to have some uh, instead of just saying everything has to be cookie cutter this is exactly the way it looks trying to give a little bit of of i guess ebb and flow to to get a, a i guess a unique uh project because um, obviously we still would have to go through the development plan review and i guess with without having the ddp portion you guys don't get to see a a final architectural sets of plans and things like that that we used to have to do with DDPs. Rachel, yeah. I was just going to make one clarification on the current RM3 zoning um, with the, the rough count of units that you could do around uh, 660. That's just literally if you take the acreage as it currently exists and do the mathematical formula yeah, out of the zoning ordinance. Do it, it doesn't by factor doing in eight plexes and the roads. Right, it and, doesn't yeah, factor in roads. Right, I mean, or I'm just saying really parking the, or the, anything the math. like that. It yeah, would probably right. honestly be closer to around 500, 4, 450, 500-ish, okay. depending on the number of bedrooms. Of course, if they were all one bedrooms, it'd be more. Um, but the more bedrooms, the, the less number of units you could and, probably accommodate with the parking requirements. And if you do lots, obviously, the more lots you have, the less buildings. So if you just, I was just looking, if you just turned this into a, a one big development type, type situation. Um, I guess the, if it gets to the point of, hey, we want to put your guys' mind at ease, saying that it's going to be uniform, I don't have a problem saying that as it being uniform as long as uniform doesn't mean they have to look a, a, I mean, down to the T exactly the same. Uh, obviously, you're going to want it to architecturally flow together. So, so are you willing to commit to taking the fourth story verbiage out of it? I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to sprinkle any of the three story all of them have to be anything that goes three story has to be sprinkled. Okay. That's state Just making sure. state rate. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just right. wanted to hear it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I'm gonna ask the question again. Would you commit to all the buildings being uniform, meaning look the same? I guess yes, they'll be uniform in the, I mean the bricks, the brick color, the all the color, the, the color. Yes, that no, would be no uniform. Color, no color will be different. Right. I mean, I, I guess if we're saying, um, yeah, I, I don't want to, we don't want a rainbow color of buildings out there. No, no. I'm asking if will it be one color. 
Right. I guess the left side will be uniform, and then the right side will be uniform. You know what I'm saying? There would be a different architectural style between the right side of the development and then the left side of the development. So they'll be uniform in, but they'll be compatible with each other architecturally, but they'll have different look as in the, the left side. The, the 24 plex will have a different look than the... I understand, no, I, I understand that. I'm just, I guess I'm asking, I'm not worried about the left side. Okay, okay. Okay, I think the left side, I understand the apartment complex and get that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm more talking about the right side is... I, yes, we will definitely want to control, I, I guess you're going at night. We want to control that. We don't want 24 different kinds of colors and buildings my, out there. My yes. question is, if y'all pick slate gray, all of them are going to be slate gray. Get them all stone, they'd all be stone. Or if they were well, all you, brick, you're going to put stone here, brick. everyone's going to have the stone in the same spots. In the same spots? Yeah. May I offer okay. sure. just a thought, maybe a suggestion? Um, as the other developments that, that have been referenced tonight, there were elevations, there were clearly described uh, uniformity, uh, there were specific materials already picked out. I have not seen that tonight, I have not heard that tonight, nor have I heard anything that would be uh, uh, couched in an enforceable manner by sure, staff. I agree. So one idea is uh, that we don't necessarily have to make a decision table. tonight. We could recess, table this application and allow them to go back and build in the creativity that they, they want to have and then come back with something that we can maybe, maybe see on as one option. But there's still more to discuss and people I think that want to speak that haven't spoke yet, but that's just a sure. thought. I think we go back to the creativity. We need to look at, as Christian was saying, and with the darker units, have a, a better design concept as to how many lots there really are and not have a two-story and a three-story building next to each other. I, Dean, I agree. I, I think one of the issues, personally, is having a 12-plex next to a 6-plex. Yes. I, I mean, I, so I don't know if y'all can can go back and say we can make all these 12 plexes well you can't because you don't have enough you don't have enough parking obviously i mean good if you had smaller lots could if you had yeah, it would still be tough wouldn't it with all 350 yeah, 350 of, units you're missing well i know or, if it says the same number of lots they have you cut your number of lots back that's true then you could have the 12 that's well that's cutting the units back Right. That's cutting right. the units back. So. Right. Yeah, it's going to have to be cut back. It's not going to meet the parking anyway. That's right. Yeah, because right now you have 34 units shown on there, mm -hmm. and you're saying there's no way you can do that many and have 250 extra parking places. So, not if they did. No, no, they they all can't be three-story 12 plexes. We were just trying to give some options. Some of the some of the people that have looked at the lots have come back and said, "Hey, we would like the option to be able to, as always, get the cost per door down and." You know, we would like to be able to buy, you know, a lot or two. Can we do a 12-plex opposed to an 8-plex? So we're just trying to roll that in. The, the, the initial, obviously, was it's just going to be 8-plex two-story buildings. And if that's what we need to commit to, then we don't have a problem with doing that. You'll commit to 8-plexes? You commit to 8-plexes? To 4-plexes or 8-plex. You know, have the 4-plex, 8-plex. Uh, obviously, be the 8-plex would just be cut in half to do a 4-plex if they had space. But no, if it, not to exceed 8-plex on that side, we don't have a problem limiting to that. I think... I Whatever you guys are thinking of doing, I think would give us a better, a clearer picture of what we're looking at here. Not only that, but a way of how they're going to monitor those choices for the individual buyers themselves. Anything else? Well, if we are going to do that, do, do you want to take care of the one item in the uh, binding elements or the uh, general development plan, or do you want? 
just do it all at that time? Okay, we'll do that. Uh, would, then we would need a motion. To, we, we have people in the audience. Do we need, let us hear from those people then, if we may, before we make a motion to, uh, yes, sir. I think it would be a good idea to give those folks the opportunity to speak. To speak. Mm -hmm. That they can address. Thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Lucas. Do we have opposition tonight? Show of hands for opposition, please. If anyone wants to make a statement, ask. Yes, if we'll 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 let each of you come and speak and, and make a statement or or ask questions. Yes, if you'll just come forward, we'll get your name and address and swear you in. Your name, sir. I'm Robert Newman, 2210 Leland Street, Bowling Green. I live in Spring Hill. Yes, and you swear to tell the truth. Yeah, I do. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I've really come here tonight opposed to this development because this will have an ad adverse impact on Spring Hill subdivision. And, uh, you know, the, and the entrance is, uh, is mostly objectionable to me because you're letting these people come into Spring Hill subdivision when there's other entrances. There's one on, the, on Veterans Parkway. There's one on the Russellville Road, but you're still letting those people come into Spring Hill subdivision. When that subdivision was set up, it was set where you could not allow people to come in off those side streets. I mean, I don't know the exact wordage, but that's why they hadn't let anybody do that. But I'm in, I, the entrances is what I oppose. Why wouldn't the entrance on Russellville Road be enough and one on Veterans Parkway? How many more entrances they need? That's the main roads. Instead, they'll be coming up Spring Hill and speed, they speed up there now. And they'll be all, what, 600 apartments coming up that road? That, to me, that's pitiful to allow that, them to do that when that was never allowed before. And uh, I mean, that's a major objection I have. I mean, they're probably gonna build it anyway, but uh, if you would, I, would, I wish you would consider that. Thank, sir. thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, sir yes, uh, and, and I know you won't love the answer, but the, that's a connectivity issue and that's not taken up here. Is that correct, well, Ben? Oh, so, so yes, that is cor the correct answer. Um, also emergency access yeah so too. so there are these typical con connectivity issues but uh, this um, uh, this body uh, staff has also has routinely uh, talked about the compatibility uh, of multifamily with single family and that they are incompatible uses so when incompatible uses are are deemed then the, then there's no requirement to connect now this development has always come in with those connections shown, so we have have let that go. But oh, it uh, could it could be closed. It could be could be closed, and then there's some question or just not used. Uh, it, it was better, and then uh, there's some issue uh, with the Walnut Street, uh, the cul-de-sac that's drawn there. Uh, is uh, I'm not sure uh, about the issue with the uh, religious institution there, but that those property lines uh, are are a little bit different there too. So I've seen uh, this development with the connections, without the connections, and everything in between. So just want to make that clarification on this particular case only. Yes, you are correct. Why is there not an entrance off Russellville Road? I guess that's confusing to me. That looks like oh, it would there. be an I think ideal that, I think situation. That's their choice. Again, I, if I, I recall, I think they weren't going to let them put a turning lane where they could turn left. The only way you're going to be able to turn out of there, I think, was right. Is that? Uh, uh, there some safety yeah, there were some safety concerns. If I think when it came through first time, it looks like by closing it, you also pick up another lot. Yes, ma'am. I didn't understand why is there not a connection to Russellville Road, Ben? Why is there not one allowed? Uh, I'm, I've, again, I can't fully answer that. Thad may have a, a better answer, but I've seen this development with a connection through uh, that existing uh, uh, the current uh, development that's currently being built. I think it's a private, private travel way. 
that has a connection to Russellville Road and I've seen it without, so that may be a, a question that, that they can clarify. Yes, ma'am, if you would state your name and address. Oh. I, I will ask you to take, Put yeah, bring that down toward your mouth. Yes, ma'am, so we can hear you. Thank you, that's good. Catherine M. Lowe. Low, L O W E. Uh, I live at three fourteen Robin, and and you swear to tell the truth. I sure do. Thank you, ma'am. Because I have been on this mission since at least last June about all this that's going on, and a, a big part of what I wanted to say was the same thing that he uh, stated. And I think that it is wrong to be able to connect just to make it easy and easy access to Walnut and Hickory and to go through the subdivision. We already have so many people that cut through Spring Hill subdivision in which they come in from Russellville Road and they'll go on through, down through the subdivision and to get out on veterans to make a shortcut so they can miss that light at veterans in Russellville Road. So they're, they're using it as a cut through. There are, uh, yeah, and like he was talking about the speeding, yeah, there's uh, on Robin, there are people who use Robin all the time for uh, a racetrack, and uh, I've talked to the police about this, and uh, I think they seem to think that they don't have enough people employed to be able to put them out there at the times they need to be. And there, of course, there's kids on the street, on those different streets, and. And so with all this traffic that they think that they're going to be bringing through there from this complex, I think it is wrong to even think about connecting. I know the city thinks that they have to use the easiest way to, for connection, but I think something could be uh, uh, done about this situation. Also, this would not be happening except for last, I guess probably, I'm not sure, maybe it's more than 20 years ago, when the back of the subdivision was opened up and created Jennings and all of that, that has created a whole a, a big problem <coughs> with the people cutting through, whether they're cutting through from the front from Russellville Road or they're cutting through from the back, come off uh, of veterans and doing it that way. Yes, Another thing is um, because the church, uh, Faith United Methodist, chose about, uh, oh, well, I'll say 20 years, almost 20 years ago, that other weather that was opened up that was further back, that probably was about 30 years ago. And that was Charles English property where that was opened up. But where the church is, and they, the church used access to Walnut coming in to the, and they opened it up there, and they had a gate up at their drive, you know, to go into the church. But they would leave that gate open, so these people who, uh, their excuse was that they would, uh, they wanted the people who were coming to that church to be able to get in from the back way. Well, that's also created a problem, too, because people that are so um, inconsiderate, they'll come in off of veterans, come in on the church property, trespassing on the church property, come around to the back, and they'll come up through that drive, and out the, the Walnut Street yes, uh, opening. And so all, you know, I can stand at my, uh, in my kitchen, at the kitchen window, looking out, and I've got headlights coming in my house. And it's disgusting. It is also disgusting about the fact that the church did, that they 
open that up, those people could come in through the front. Yes, ma'am. And it's, I mean, there's been a lot of wrong things that have happened. Yes, ma'am. And how they got away with it without getting permission to do these things. They just did it. We, we are discussing the subdivision that's being proposed tonight, not the, the church. We can't well, help No, you. I'm talking we about can, the things that happen that affect Spring but, Hill subdivision. But we have no control over, over that. All right. You understand that. We, we do not have but any control. But the problem still sits yes, there. Yes, ma'am. We understand. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, as far as the... Uh, the traffic that comes through <coughs> that subdivision and then you put more on it. I don't understand why they can't have two entrances on veterans. Yes, yes. One at the upper side and one on down further. That, that, poss that could be an option if the applicants decided to do that. I believe you heard Mr. Peterson comment that when there are different zoning that they do not have to interconnect. So that is an option. That and I will further clarify that, that the connectivity, I think, is still a good sound planning permit yes. principle, something that should be done, especially a traffic light put in, then the people in the neighborhood could right. get out of the traffic light as well. But the requirement of the subdivision regulations uh, are not, uh, d would not require this to connect. And, and that would depend on the applicant, what their, their uh, proposal would be to us uh, do you, anything else ma'am well, um, concerning just the fact that you know you can only put so many people on a piece of land and when you're trying to cram as many units in as you possibly can uh, we're going to turn it into uh, what they call projects that I think you know what that is. Thank you, ma'am. And I don't think we need that. Do we have anyone else in the audience that would like to make a statement? No one else? So I think we've heard from everyone. Anything else? Commissioners? Just reference one more uh, phone call that I received uh, just right before the meeting. It was concerning sidewalks. Um, uh, sidewalks in the development, uh, of course, are, are required, but it was also concerning. Uh, this, this person said they weren't opposed to the development if sidewalks were going to be part of the development, but then also sidewalks installed uh, in the existing neighborhood, which I, we, we, uh, we cannot require that, obviously, uh, for the... For, for obvious reasons, but I, I did tell that person that I would relay that to the commission as well as the developers, uh, that the sidewalks were, were, uh, were uh, desired through, through the existing neighborhood as well as in the new development, but if sidewalks weren't going to be put in the neighborhood, that they were, they were opposed to it. So okay, okay. <laughs> without the sidewalks there, so. in their neighborhood, okay. So are we going to motion tonight? If, if that... Yes, well, do, do you care if I, because no. there's other things we'd like to talk about. Yes, sir. We don't have a problem committing to eight plexes and being uniform throughout. Um, it's what we're just talking about back here. So we don't have a problem doing that. And I also want to address the, the drainage, since we're here, if we could go ahead and just hit a few things that we're talking about. The, the blank area up in the top by the, the one building that Mark Absher was talking about, that is, if you all know, that's a big rock quarry that's out there right now. It's about 40-something feet right behind those houses. You walk through the trees, I mean, it's, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing. So, unfortunately, the property drops from up there down, so only a, a, so much drainage can be diverted to that, that area. So, our proposal is to fill that in, flatten the slopes to make that a safer uh, area up there, but also to use it for drainage purposes. Uh, then there's also, I'm not sure how to put, do you push the middle? What area are you talking about? You're, I, you're totally confused. Right there. <coughs> That's the, I, there's a big, uh, ro there was a rock quarry there years ago. And it's, so it's, it's a one-to-one -one slope right up against the residential subdivisions without, it's, there's not any fencing, no protective um, anything so you just walk right out of your backyard you can drop 
straight down. So our, our proposal is to obviously drain what we can up into there, but then to shallow it up, flatten out the um, slopes to make it maintainable and obviously safer. Then there's already been an easement purchased right here from these property owners to install a large basin there. And the one thing you can't see here, there is a proposed, there it's under construction right now on the old Wabob property. Right here is a cul-de-sac, and then there is two large buildings proposed that were provided to us by that lot owner that it's gonna be multifamily. And um, he requested connection through to this development because we were, we were trying to get a light here uh, so that they would have an outlet for, for Russellville Road to connect to that, uh, that intersection. So we want a traffic light right there and uh, you know are in discussions with the highway department on trying to get one installed there as soon as possible. Obviously there's some lane changing and striping that has to be done here. We've already submitted that for the, to the highway department and got preliminary approval on that. Um, and then on, on the flood zone area right here, uh, obviously there's certain restrictions on that that we can do from because of federal issues but we'd like to uh, you know make that a landscaped area if we can have dog walk park or we can have any kind of um, walking trails or anything like that in that area if you go in the, if, you, if you're ever over there it's just such a trash pit of stuff so we would like to try to figure out ways to try to uh, make that more like of a park area as best we can Obviously, we've got certain requirements we have to fall into because of FEMA, but that's kind of the goal of trying to to, to work in that corner there. Uh, there was a question about the clubhouse access to the other side. That would be an option that if they wanted to pay a, a, a fee for membership or something like that, there's obviously some things that have to be worked out there, but it would be open to the, the multifamily to utilize that, uh, that area jointly. It's mainly for the apartment complex, but there would be an option, sort of like Traditions did. On the back side there's so where they made it an option that they could utilize that situation. There would be two owners, uh, one for the commercial, uh, not a homeowners association, but an owners association. So the commercial would be broken into one and then the, the multifamily would be broken into another. Uh, what about the question that came up? Would you all be, com willing to commit to putting an access off of Russellville Road? I kind of walked through why we didn't do that. There's some, some issues with right beside the property and right across the road from the property um, are car dealerships and they're, they consistently block that area with, with semi-traffic. And uh, there were some site issue concerns with how far the, the signal backs up and then there's also about a, a five to six foot elevation grade drop coming into the property. So we, we didn't put a connection there due to, to uh, site and, and connection concerns. There's also a, a sign right there, a um, billboard sign, and the gentleman that parks all of his sales cars parks it all the way out to the sidewalk. So you, it's just difficult seeing left and right out of that uh, the location. So we decided not to put a, an access point there. But if you've got single family there on Robin Avenue, single family homes, don't you see their concern about having 1,200 cars coming that way? I mean, if people started, especially the ones toward the back there, if they start using that, isn't that gonna be a concern? Well, that's why we, we, we had Cannon and Cannon to look at that, and their, their thought was that traffic would be flowing into this light from you wouldn't have traffic coming from this development going up. You would have traffic coming from this development down and through to get to this, this light. Um, that was their recommendation. Then I know there was some concern about this cul-de-sac, while we have a cul-de-sac there. It's actually a platted right-of-way right now. Without a, without a cul-de-sac being constructed, we were going to construct that. And instead of requesting the city to build it, we were going to uh, connect that there. We've had many conversations with the church they don't want connectivity to their property um, from, you know, we had proposed connecting there into their parking lot uh, to allow them to get to the light and they really didn't want any kind of connectivity between the two properties if, if at all possible, so. Uh, the church is used to a lot of traffic going through there where the single family, they really have issues with that and that 
you don't see that as a be easier to go through the church area than it would be going through these single family homes with kids and stuff out there off well, of hickory and off of walnut well Hick hickory is i mean we've talked with the city these are city streets and, and the city would like to have connectivity down to veterans memorial uh, that was a discussion we've we've had with them um, so we're trying to obviously we've got the city public works trying to work with connectivity there then also with the state the state would they also told us they did not want us to connect to the church and bring any traffic through this uh, connection here uh, that was negotiated for the church when they widened veterans memorial and it's only allowed for the church to have access through there so there were there were some extenuating circumstances why the connections are the way they are uh, let me ask you are, are, are you asking us to vote on this tonight or are you well i want to walk through i mean if if saying hey if we have to postpone and come back in two weeks and bring some materials that would be the better thing make you feel more comfortable what you're looking at have no problem with that but i thought if we can go ahead with people here we can go ahead and talk through things if there's other things we need to address um i i from my standpoint i think you i'd like y'all to i'd like to see y'all come back with with what you're planning on building, uh, kind of a, an idea that we can look at. I mean, they all going to be they're all going to be eight plexes. They're all going to be this color. And how many okay. units really is that? How are we with parking? I think there's just so many unknowns uh, for us to vote on it tonight, in my opinion. But th uh, that's just my opinion. I concur. Obviously, we want it to be a successful development, so uh, we want to make sure we put everybody's mind at ease. So if that's I think makes the most sense. We're willing to do that. Wawa property, you were you were kind of referencing that. So, are you saying that's that is for certain that it's going to be an access? We had that in our original concept plan, and and we were requested to remove that because that really wasn't our development. But but we had shown that at, that men's group um, living, I believe, is right here. It's already it's already been constructed, um, the journeyman, and then. Um, there's two large buildings here. The, the, the proposal we got, there was just two, I think there were 42 unit buildings that were proposed here with parking and they wanted an out that, a that connection piece of coming that, out. That piece of property can have 120 units on it. Maybe it's 120 units. Yeah. So their concern was coming out here right at this light that would be the, just impossible. I think that was the one. I okay. And, and so there, yeah. We've we've proposed to, to make a connection here on their property to, to allow them to you know obviously a better connectivity because the way this light backs up here, right? I'm, obviously, I'm I'm surprised they ever got an access point approved for that, but they did. <laughs> on Russellville Road. On Russellville Road, right? Right yeah. turn on. R r right, but it's uh, I'm yeah. I'm surprised they they uh, got a I mean it's a city cul-de-sac street I, I'm I was surprised that was at discussion that. Discussion that we had here yeah. that was <coughs> very concerned about that mm -hmm. that that amount of, of traffic generator but we were told that's not a traffic generator that low of a number on that big of a street so now we addressed that, Te that technically economy. technically yes from the engineering standpoint yeah. yes but yeah. uh, obviously the owner we we met with them and want to try to get another. Um, connection there because we didn't have another connection on Russellville Road. You all weren't required to do any kind of traffic study with this many units and this many people? Well, we did a, um, we, we wanted a traffic light and the city and the state and the city said, well, in, in lieu of doing a traffic study, if you'll do a signalization study to see if it actually warrants a, a traffic light, then, then that's what we would like to have. Along with the other improvements, along with other agreed, improvements, there was two on veterans. Th th that's terminals. correct. There's there's lane striping that has to be done. There's there's some work that has to be done on Veterans Memorial. Also, it'll be similar to uh, if you look at veterans from a bird's eye view. Every one of the intersections have the same striping. Uh, if you go to the Walmart, all those. So it has to have the exact same striping pattern and layout here as it would down Veterans Memorial and on the other location. So that was in conjunction with. Um, Any other questions? Nothing else? I, I don't know if the consensus has been to go ahead and postpone. I'll, I'll just make a motion. I'll make a motion. Delay the meeting if 
everyone, we we'll just need to get a motion on the floor. I think we just make a motion to, to table this application. Okay. So the motion would be because uh, all business cannot be dispensed with at this meeting, it is my motion that we recess this hearing to pursuant to section 6-2 of the commission bylaws to be uh, reconvened on February 21st, 2019 at uh, 6 p.m. in this building. I second that. That was your motion? Yes, that Hamp had my motion. Thank you. And <laughs> he reads have, it so much better than I do. Just, we got our second <laughs> first. I wanted to make sure we did have a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Croppinger. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Gay. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren. Ma'am. Commissioner Madison. Yes, ma Commissioner Houston. Yes, ma'am. Chair Renner. Yes, ma'am. So we will continue this hearing February 21st in this chamber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thirty feet in height and 150 square feet. Okay. Just what the zoning ordinance allows. No, we're not a joint. Want to go ahead? How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Good to see you. All right, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Are you taking the Rachel home? Yes. Nothing else, then we are adjourned.